Amen. I trust that is your testimony tonight. Are you glad to be in the house of God? Amen. I have a bad habit of announcing a scripture text and then taking off like it's a drag race or something. I, I hear those comments, but tonight I can't modify my behavior because we have four different passages of scripture and uh, try to keep up if you can. James chapter 1 and verse 5, Matthew chapter 7, 1 Peter 3, and Luke chapter 8. Um, see what I mean? But I want you, as we read these passages, I want you to see if you can identify. There's a bit of a theme in the first two, and then there's a bit of a theme in the second two. And I want you to see if you can pick up on that simple message tonight that has been on my heart throughout this week. James chapter 1 and verse 5 reads like this. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11, uh, is where we're turning. It reads like this. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread... Will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. As we're turning there, can anybody tell me from those first two passages we read in James 1, 5 and Matthew 7, what do you think the theme is there in one word? What would it be? What's that? Seek and you shall find. Okay, I heard somebody say ask. Asking. That's the theme. Asking. Now, see if you can identify the theme in these verses. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Now we're turning to Luke chapter 8. And this is sort of in between stories, if you will. I, I love this story. I thought about reading the whole thing, but for the sake of time, we're just going to kind of jump in here at verse 38. In verse 38, Luke chapter 8. This is the story of the demoniac. Uh, he has been healed now. He, the demons have been cast out. And we're picking up the reading at verse 38. And basically, the demoniac, or the former demoniac, is wanting to go with Jesus. He's wanting to, to join, and he's wanting to travel with Jesus. Interesting what Jesus tells him. Now, the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way, and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. And it came to pass that when Jesus returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house, for he had only one daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a-dying. But as he went, the people thronged him, and a woman having an issue of blood, 12 years, which had spent all of her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stanched. Now, 1 Peter chapter 3 and Luke chapter 8, can anybody tell me what do you think the theme is there? Telling or answering. Just ask and do tell. That's the message uh, that I want to share with you tonight from these passages. Father in heaven, we pray that you would add your blessing to the reading of your word. Lord, we don't know how to preach on our own, but I pray that you would come and I pray that you would share work through us and minister to the congregation and to our own hearts tonight. It's in Jesus' name and everybody said Amen. The message tonight is divided into two simple points. Just ask and do 
tell. It was back in the early 2000s that Rodney Griffin penned a song called Just Ask. The words to that song go like this. Alone in the darkness you're wondering, is Jesus still listening to me? Is he truly aware of my suffering? And is this the way it always will be? My friend, I know the answer to your questions, but don't trust my opinion alone. You should ask the host of others, sisters and brothers who've been there and their stories live on. Just ask the woman at the well, the thief on the cross, the lame man who's walking, the dumb tell it all. Ask the beggars and lepers who've been cleansed by his touch. Can he handle an impossible task? They'll know the answer. Just ask. So let's do that tonight for a few moments. She's back at the well. When I say the well, I mean the well. The place where it all happened. You see, that day was just another day for her. It was a day of discouragement and defeat. A day when she tried to wear a smile, but it wasn't real. She attempted to act like everything was okay, but it was just an act. Come to think of it, her entire life was just an act. She pretended to be in love. She convinced herself that she was loved. But she knew deep down she had been used and she had used. That day when she traveled with her water pot, it was as if she was stuck in time. The signs of sin were wearing on her. The sound of her footsteps on the path seemed to echo in the empty chambers of her soul. Each step was symbolic. It was plodding. It was monotonous. Day in and day out, empty. But today, she retraces that very same path, and she does so with joy. Each step has purpose, and the song of her soul is full and free. She arrives now, and we go to her, and we ask, what changed? I mean, why are you back at the well? I, I thought... He said, you would never thirst again. She smiles, I, I have never thirsted again. Well then ma'am, why are you at the well? Oh, this water? Of course we need this water. But he wasn't talking about that. She sets down her water pot and she points to her heart. The deep thirst of my soul has been quenched. I am satisfied. All my life long I had panted for a drink from some cool spring that I hoped would quench the burning of the thirst I felt within. Hallelujah, I have found him. Whom, not what, my soul so long had craved. Jesus satisfies my longings and by his blood. I now am saved. We thank her, and we're glad that we've asked, but we've got some more asking to do. If we could transport ourselves to the golden streets of heaven, and we could go door to door in the mansions that line those, line those glimmering avenues, we may stop at one particular mansion and knock on the door. The one who comes to answer is arrayed in beautiful garments as is everyone else in the city. We ask his name and he tells us, but then he says, you may better know me as the thief on the cross. We're taken aback. We thought for sure this must be Joshua or Mark or Andrew or Luke. Come on in. He motions us inside. I've got something to say. You may think it's odd that I'm here. I never served God. Quite the opposite. I lived a life of rebellion and hate, of sin, of thievery. If you name it, I did it. And you also know my story well. I was forgiven moments before I breathed my last on earth. And then I came here. I can see him now in my imagination as he walks to the window and he looks out onto the golden street and he says, you see that mansion three doors down? That's Moses. We're only three doors apart. And he was this great prophet and leader of God. And I was a thief on the cross, a common thief, a life of sin, deserving of death. And yet here I am because of Jesus. The thief on the cross will tell you, can Jesus handle an impossible task. I know the answer. Actually, I am the answer. I'm glad you asked. If we could leave heaven and travel back in time to those little villages and towns, to those cities where Jesus lived and worked and walked, we would find ourselves moving down a street 
And we would be walking and we would hear footsteps come running quickly from behind us. Running in just a few seconds, he's beside us and then he's ahead of us. And before we know it, he's already gone. You've seen joggers who look like they're going to die at any moment. That's why I don't jog. They look like they're miserable. That is not fun. That is not good. You'll live longer. Who wants to live that way? Not I. But this guy doesn't look like that. He's an absolute machine. He's running and he's shouting and he's not even out of breath. Oh, he does that all the time, they say. You know, for years, he couldn't even walk. But then Jesus came, and that guy hasn't stopped running since. And if you could catch up to him, if you could, maybe you should ask him, can Jesus handle an impossible task? He knows the answer. Just ask. A few moments later, we find a crowd gathered in the street. And a man with a booming James Plank type voice is standing on a wooden box on the street corner. And he is preaching and he is sharing the gospel and the crowd around is enraptured by the message of it. Quite the speaker, someone remarks. Sure is, another replies. And to think that a short time ago he couldn't say anything at all. For real, we ask? Absolutely. And while we're thinking and we're listening to this man who's speaking, another man comes to us and he's handing out some small loaves of bread. Friend, are you hungry? Here, take this bread. And we take it from his hands and we begin to break it and put it to our lips because we actually are hungry. You can eat it, a lady behind us says. But you wouldn't have done that a few months ago because those hands that gave you that bread were covered in leprosy. They sure were, another man says. I was a drunk. I was a beggar. I used to use up all my money in riotous, li riotous living. But then Jesus came, and today I feed my family. There's a roof over my head and clothes on my back. And that was impossible, his friend explains. Strong drink had you bound like a demon. We had given all hope. Can he handle an impossible task? They'll know the answer just ask. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we need to do a lot more asking of God. We need to go to God. The scripture says, ye have not because ye ask not. The scripture that we read tonight says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask because God gives liberally. He upbraids not. He won't reject you for asking. He won't belittle you for asking, but he asks you to come and make your requests be made known unto God. Ask I think we make two common mistakes. Brother Schaefer testified tonight, uh, fit right in with the message. I couldn't wait to get to this part of it, Brother Doug. I think sometimes we ask for the really big things and we forget to ask God for the really small things. And that's a perfect recipe for small things becoming big problems when we fail to ask. And then sometimes I think we get so caught up in the small things that we don't have enough faith to ask God for the big things. Think of some of these people that we've mentioned tonight in sort of a generic way. They ask God for some big things. They ask God for their blindness to be removed, for the lameness to be removed, for a demon to be cast out, and he did it. And the reason he did it is because they asked Ask God. We ask God not only through prayer. The scripture says a good father will not give a child a snake, a serpent, when he asks for a fish. I thought about that verse. My boys would ask for a snake and I would give them a fish. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm glad it's not the other way around in scripture. Because if they ask for a snake, the fish I can do, the snake I can't. And all God's people said amen. Amen. But you get the point. A good father is going to give those things that are good for his children. That is our heavenly father. So whatever you are facing tonight, I want to urge you, church, ask God. Ask him in prayer. Ask him in his word. Ask him. Oh, for, 
His word is so rich. His word is so rich. The wisdom of the Proverbs, the detailed description of the Old Testament law, the miracles of the Gospels, the veiled warnings of the prophecies, all of it is given by inspiration and is profitable for doctrine, for correction, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness. And I mention this tonight because we're asking everybody, oh, how do I do this? How do I do that? And we're praying. And yet right before us are so many answers to life. But sometimes we're like my children when I send them to the garage. Go find a hammer. There ain't no hammer in there. I didn't see it. There's no hammer. Six inches in front of their face. If it was a snake, it would have... Yeah. And we talk about children, and I guess that's to be expected. But what about us? Sometimes, if it was a snake, it would have bit us. It's right here, but we've got to prayerfully open God's word and ask. Not only should we ask God through prayer, ask God through his word, but to ask God through his people. Do you know the saints of the present are are one of life's greatest treasures and resources? We need to be better askers. We need to go to that one. And that's why I appreciated um, last Sunday night we had the uh, class here and we were interviewing some of our folks to give us some of their wisdom. Because over the years, you do gain some wisdom along the way. You go to the school of hard knocks, you, you, you learn some lessons the hard way, and, and the younger people need to understand those things. They need to learn those things. But we, as younger people, have to learn to ask. If you're young in the faith, you have to learn to ask and rely on the strength of other people. It's not that your faith is in, is in them. It's not that you believe that they can get you to heaven, but they've been down this road before and we need their wisdom and help I want to be somebody who asks the second part of this is this if if there's going to be askers there has to be tellers amen there has to be people who are willing to share there has to be people who are willing to tell what God has done for them brother Doug I appreciated what you said those of you who testified tonight I appreciated what you shared because you were telling what God did for you this is kind of like a stream in one hand people are asking about God and on the other side people are telling about God this is the plan of God that we're inquiring about what we don't know and we're telling about what we do know to the glory of God. I find it interesting that in Luke chapter 8, which we read tonight, that little excerpt, I find it interesting that he sends the demoniac home. He sends him home and says, tell your house. And we see what the scripture says there. He was telling, and get the idea, he was telling absolutely everybody that he knew. He published it through the whole city. And yet, you can see that shortly after there, Jairus comes. Shortly after there, uh, the woman with the issue of blood comes. I don't know that he told them directly, but he began to make known that God was doing something. Sinners would get more excited about God if the saints were more excited about God. Sinners would be more likely to pray if the saints were more happy about testifying about what God has done in their lives. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. You say, well, pastor, if I had a story like the demoniac, if I had a story like Jairus and his daughter, like the woman with the issue of blood, that I would tell. Then people would be affected. Then God would get the glory. And I ask you this, why wait to tell your story? Could it be? That God does not do more in our lives because we have failed to give him testimony and praise for the things he has already done. If you're right with God tonight, you have a story to tell. And there are people who need to hear that story You don't have to have a story like Ron Stevens. You don't have to have a testimony that takes an hour. 
But you can say, I was a sinner and Jesus saved me and I've never been the same. Or I grew up in a Christian home and Jesus saved me in a young age and I wanted to serve him with all of my heart and soul and mind and strength ever since. What a beautiful testimony. So tell it because there's people who are going to be asking. It's time to tell. I say it this way, gossip the gospel. Gossip the gospel. Get it out there. Get it where people can know. In our world today, people reject truth, but there's one type of truth that they will accept over anything else, and that is personal truth that you tell them. We live in a very subjective world where people appreciate the testimonies, and we've emphasized that you believe what you believe, and you believe what you believe, and it's all good. Well, we know that's a flaw. We know that's a flaw in logic, and yet people are willing to accept the testimonies of what God has done in your life. So tell them. The scripture says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15, as we draw to a close, says this. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So tonight as we face another week, you may have a lot of questions and I want to tell you these two words. Just ask. Ask God. Ask his word. And ask his people. And you may be on the other side of it. And God has done something in your life. Do tell what God has done. Go this week seeking God. Go this week telling what God has done for you. Let's stand together. Father in heaven, I pray that you would help us to be continually seeking your face. In faith to be asking. In faith to be seeking. There's so much we don't know, but we come to you for our needs. And you draw us to yourself, and we know that you have the answers. And then for those who found spiritual victory, for those who found a walk with God, I pray that you would be faithful, help us to be faithful to you, to tell what you have done for us so that when someone asks, we can give them the gospel. I pray that you would be with our people as we go to our homes and jobs and school and whatever else is to take place this week. Be with the convention, those who are traveling in a special way, oh God. We ask for an outpouring of your spirit with the service that's here on Wednesday night. May you get the glory and honor and praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and ask these things and all God's people said, amen. Remember, ask and tell. God bless you. Have a great evening. Thanks for coming today.